Um, the last three years I've toured a lot. Built, built to spill. Oh. Um, at first it was just because I was playing with Mike Johnson, playing drums through that band, which Jim and Brett play with too. And then I uh, started off just selling Built to Spill shirts. Me and Doug, like a, he always needed someone to play basketball with. And, I like to play basketball. I think that's the only reason that they keep having me back. Doug gets someone to play basketball with. Are you better than him? He's <laughs> fucking way better than me. He's real good. You'd be surprised. See, because you're taller than him, you just expect. I got a better inside game. He's got a real sweet 15 footer. When I was touring with Mike Johnson with Built to Spill, and I just gave a CD to Doug, and he liked it. And, you know, Doug's really good friends with Pete from Up Records, and you know, before Chris and Takino passed away, they were best friends, and I think he just liked it. And uh, because you know that stuff, it's not like such a far stretch to be playing with Built to Spill, because you know the whole Up Records thing mm -hmm. really kind of has a big bond, especially after Chris died. Everyone on that label was just real good to each other. It's kind of a special thing. Now, of course, they're like you know on Warner Brothers now, and. I just feel lucky every time that we get to go out. Now, the last tour, he asked us to do it. This tour, I would asked him if he would let me do it. Just because of the new records, let me play. And he's fine with that. I did think that, you know, the similar aesthetics and the two bands. Um, and maybe, like, I've been influenced by them now just because I'm constantly on tour. I, mean, I, did, I have a definite, a different kind of respect for Doug, Doug's songwriting now than I had even when I was just like kind of a, a casual like fan of the band, and which came about, you know, I heard it just because it was on my record, and I thought it was cool, but I had never seen them live. First time I heard Helvetia was um, when uh, Jason, her singer, was out on tour with. Uh, Mike Johnson and the Evil Doers, they were opening for Built to Spill. That's where I met Jason. He and I hit it off pretty quickly, played a lot of basketball together, became good friends, and then, um, I can't remember if he was playing shows from the get-go on that trip, or halfway through it maybe, his band came out or something. So I kind of knew him a little bit before I heard him play. And then, um, yeah, I loved his music. I'd actually heard some four-track things, uh, while I was staying with my friend Pete, who runs Up Records, and Jason had brought over some four-track things that I really loved, and I was a fan of Duster, so I kind of knew who he was. Um, but uh, you know, to me, I like to me, he's like sounds like the kind of music I grew up listening to. It sounds like you know, uh, dinosaur, and, you know, things like that. It reminds me of old SST punk rock. Yeah, it was a very nice time. Uh, we recorded that Helvetia record at Jim's house, Jim Roth. He's got a, he's been collecting stuff for years and years. He finally got a hold of a good tape machine. And uh, his house in Seattle was recorded in the basement. And uh, him and Jason made that record. Me and uh, I played on some just one day. Just like, you know, casual, just like we do. And uh, Mike Johnson played on it a little bit. We just kind of hung out. It was a good, good time.